to die quickly? Yeah, well, death ain't so bad then. There's not too much to feel bad about. But if you have to witness it, then it's a whole different game. Because then you have those images stuck in your head. And those are really hard to rationalize away. I mean, if you have images of somebody in pain, that's tough. And if you have images of somebody getting decapitated or some sloppy way to die, some way that just seems ungraceful or undignified to the person that you care about, like a disgrace to them, you're gonna have a hard time just wiping that away, you know, rationalizing, come up with some sort of bullshit story to make it go away. But if you really try, you could do it. But in a sense, you're not going to want to do it because you're going to want to cherish the thing, that thing called dignity. Or that thing, there are things that matter to us emotionally that probably do have value. I mean, our, even though our perceptions of our definitions of beauty might be entirely conditioned, entirely just a personal contrivance, it's still ours and it still means something to us. And it's what gives our life meaning. It's what defines what means something to us. And I'm not saying there's not a reason to say to yourself or to rationalize that away, if that's your choice, but it's almost like rationalizing away sexual desire. You could probably do it, but why would you want to? You know, why would you want to take from yourself something that's so, so much a part of what living is? So in a way it's, it's, you know, that part of the monkery, that part of being a monk or being a brain controller or Mr. Spock is the part you could say, well, why bother? I mean, why would I want to be that? I mean, if I'm not going to be addicted, if I'm not going to be um, full of that passion, then why exist at all? I mean, being a zombie is a waste of time real waste of time. So I argue for something in between there. I mean, I think we still have to be what we are naturally. You, you stick your hand in a fire, you're going to feel it. And if you waste 10 years of your life trying not to feel it, you're an idiot. <laughs> okay, you've wasted your time. You have to deal with the fact that we have basic sensations that are going to be powerful. But, but it is powerful. It is good to understand some of the basic dynamics of psychology. And it's good to understand a thing called mood. And that when you don't feel well, jokes aren't going to be as funny and beauty isn't going to be as pretty and a lot of things are going to change because of that mood and um you know and then we have some control over some of that stuff like i said we can't do too much about native feelings i mean they're powerful potent things the reptile brain and the ape brain are powerful brains and, and there's only so much we can do to rationalize them into obedience the whole thing is ludicrous and that's what I'm trying to get people to do is to quit rationalizing away the ludicrous nature of life itself, this pursuit game. And certainly we should be able to become less addicted to some aspects of this foolish nonsense we're participating in. The whole idea of reproducing it to another generation, well that's a silly attachment. There's no need for that, that the affection for our race or our kind or our way of life, as if it matters. There's things we can rationalize out of ourselves that we don't have to impose on the world. We don't have to make the cost of our drunkenness mayhem. I mean, we can control how much damage we can do and still fulfill fill our role as an addicted, psychotic feeding machine built by a dumb molecule. So anyway, I mean, it's, look, it's the tendency of the human being, I guess what I'm really fighting against is it's the tendency of the human being to want to create that happy mood. It's, an, it's more fun to be happy than sad. And I'm just trying to make the argument that people are already doing too much of that. They're already rationalizing away too much of the price of this thing called life on Earth. I mean, they rationalize away the suffering of animals. They just say, well, hell, it's not my problem. I didn't invent the system. Nature is what nature is. It's not my problem. I don't have to clean it up. I don't have to worry about it. So they just rationalize all that suffering away as if it doesn't exist. And so we already have too much of that, in my opinion. Because all of this has to be accounted for. If you look at life soberly, there's nothing there, okay? It's need created for no need. The existence of a need that doesn't satisfy any need. And to perpetuate it mindlessly or without a great deal of serious thought is irresponsible, simply.